in a second and looking okay, so to make now, sure there is a RET uh, res that's connected to the camera that's inside the bag. Uh, nine, no. I'm not going to try to open that lid right now. We, um, is there a question about the config, or do we think we forgot it, or what? Yeah, I think there's no question that, sir. We were just a little surprised that there were two RETs on that scoop instead of one. We expected one. Okay. Well, I think um, I think I connected that other RET to it when I dropped it off. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Was, Great. Was, yeah. Definitely have a RET on the uh, camera. Okay. So that was um, Butch Wilmore here in Mission Control Houston who's talking to the two crew members in space, currently spacewalking. Um, Ricky Arnold at the end of the station's robotic arm whose helmet camera we're viewing right now. They're talking about rets and scoops. The scoop is a thing that's in front of him. It's, uh, it's that silver sort of stick in the foreground there that uh, helps him to handle the equipment that he's working with. It's a good uh, way to grab the equipment and have a good grip on it with those EVA uh, spacewalking gloves. The ret is the, retra is the um, retractable equipment tether that allows them to make sure that uh, if they let go that it will still be um, uh, able to be grabbed and, and still attached to station or themselves. Thank you. Okay, I am over your right shoulder, trying to hand you the scoop. Yeah, just set myself the other way. Um, okay. I have it, but we're colliding cameras here. Let's not. Okay. I'm going to bring it towards you. Yeah. Block it. Block it. Yeah, block it from yourself. Okay, I'm working on it, and then I'll uh, back off here. Okay. Drew, of course, you're going to yeah, attempt to stow that camera. Look, Butch, the, the things you say seem so trivial. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so not. <laughs> Trust me, we understand. I know. Uh, <laughs> do it. I know, Bubba. I know you know what I'm, <laughs> I'm doing out here. Oh, we've yeah. done battle with camera stands oh, yeah. before. Everybody has. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to attempt so it. Here we go. Okay, the camera is temp stowed with an adjustable tether to the handrail. Put the red somewhere as well. Okay, so those are both attached to the scoop, which is locked. Now the camera is out of the way to the aft. Now. I want the other one. Hey, Butch, do we, uh, if we're ahead that much on Drew's stuff, do we want to have him just hand me the camera, put, install it, and then put the ORU bag on my bag before I depart? Yeah, y'all can work together to get this get camera installed. We'll get that. You can bundle up the bag. Does that work for you guys? Yeah, ultimately, I think, Ricky, you're going to wind up installing the camera, and the bag for the camera will be on your BRT. Yeah, but I was wondering if, if Drew's that far ahead, he could hand me the camera out of the bag. I could go ahead and install it, do the inventory, then put the bag on the BRT while you guys power up the camera, and then go. We are good with your plan. Work for you? Me? Yeah. You're not, I can't see you. I don't know what you're talking to me. 
it's just a suggestion that me, I don't know what you hear. Well, hold on, I'm wailing around out here for a second. It didn't volunteer you to put your camera back in the bag. I could have done that. What camera? Bad one. Okay. Do we need to get the shower cap off first? You do not need to take the shower, shower cap, cap off first. Comes and then you hand me a thing. Is that correct, Butch? Okay, but there's a wrap from the shower cap to the bag. Yeah, and that'll keep give me a hard time. Yeah, go ahead. You can go ahead and take the shower cap off. Oh, because it's going to get still. Are those straps? Okay. I'm not sure if you copied that, Drew, but yeah, she can remove the shower cap. Yeah, yeah. Copy. We're working it. Or should I say I'm working it? <laughs> what are you doing? Not helping. Hold something. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I don't know. Grab the camera or something. I can't see anything. There, there's the scoop. Can't rotate it around. All right now, I got it. Okay. Hey. Well, I mean, our cap sung pretty well. Okay, shower cap. Okay, our cap's off. And hold on, I'm. Okay. <laughs> right, you've got the camera it's of sorts. Yeah, it's like the, the bag, too. If you're the only one holding it, you can let go of the bag. I'm not touching the bag. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got the bag. That's the camera. Good. <laughs> Uh, that big. Nice. Oh. You got to get that spike through that hole. Yeah, I know. Oh. Trying to line it. It looked like it was right on. Go. Okay. Nice. Get it? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. Let's work. A lot of math on this thing. Um. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Butch. Soft docky. Yeah. Hey guys. Um, I can drill, drive through the scoop though. I just wanted to make sure that you guys did check for any fodder bit and pins on both uh, both sides of that before the install. And if not, that's no big deal. You can take it out and we'll look at it. Yeah, the back side didn't look. I didn't see the camera, but I can do that real quick. Thanks for the reminder. All right, Ricky, here's this. So again, another uh, short handover of communications. Uh, just a few more seconds until we regain video communications from the space station as we're handing over from satellite to satellite. Troop Foy still uh, just sort of uh, finagling with the uh, orbital replacement unit, the spare camera that they're going to swap into uh, position of a currently failed camera. I think you were doing it, checking no FOD, good EMI band on the spare CG. No FOD and no bent pins. And if you haven't already done it, you've got yep. your shower cap off and uh, tended to the ORU bag. And as you uh, put it in, you're going to push in and rotate the camera tilt 10 lever to the unlock position and verify the lever pops out. Out of there you go. Okay. You want me to do that before I drive any bolts? That's affirmative. Huh. Seems like it would pop off. So maybe I'm afraid of it. Okay. It's done. All right, and it looks like you've, gonna, you've got it installed along the two guide pins. Uh, there is not a soft dock, remember, on this camera.
Okay, so the plunge you're kind of doing the, uh, oh, hold on a second. Yeah, and when you said it's done, does that mean that the lever popped out? Yeah, but I, it's the cable one. They get the cable one? Yeah, you got the cable one. I couldn't see the other one. I can see the cable levers up. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Let me, can I, can you bundle them? Yeah, I can. The other one was completely hidden. How you doing? Okay, the cable one is locked. Um, do we want to put this cable through the little P-clamp? Hey Houston, there's a little P-clamp for the uh, wire that goes to the camera. Run it through that P-clamp. That's a farm. Uh, so put it to, through the TA clamp, please. Okay, stand by. Okay, Rick, in your WVS, we see that uh, pan and tilt lever is in the unlocked position. Just want to verify it has popped out. Okay, I've got it through there. Um, I'm to Hold on. I'm trying to hold on to your head. Hold on a second. Okay, I've let go. Third time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I think we're there. We're ready to install the camera on the stanchion by sliding it along the two guide pins into the install position. No soft dock. Okay, it's there. Okay, you can install your large hook of your mini workstation RET on the TVCIC. Lock out the RET reel with slack. Got it. You can release the scoop now to to and tend it back to the ORU bag. Which do I have to go to put the other camera on my BRT? You're not going to put it in the bag for me? Uh, I thought was the plan was to take it back <laughs> like you. Yeah, it doesn't go <laughs> in the bag. Don't torture me, man. You want me to go ahead and install it on my BRT? Keep you busy. That's affirmative, Drew. You have a go for that, and the bag go. stays with Ricky. So, Rick, it should go right back to the bag. So, okay, yeah, I can't cool. read. I can't see it. Though. Okay, it's got tether on it. Yeah. All right, Butch. I'm uh, ready. The scoop's released. And it's back to the ORU bag, correct? It is. It back. is. Attached to the ORU bag. It is not inside it yet. Okay. Let me real quick tag up with Drew. We'll come back to you, Ricky. You, Drew, for that, um, you're stowing it on your BRT. You're going to check all the tethers and tools are clear of the spare uh, camera. Then you will translate back to the airlock. You're going to put it in there, and then you're going to head back up the SGTRC worksite. How copy? I copy it all. Okay, back to you, Ricky. I got a caution and a note. The caution, when driving bolts, do not release PGT trigger until correct number of turns is reached. If the PGT trigger is released, report the running torque and turns to me before restarting bolt install. I'll copy that. Okay, copy. Uh, two notes. The PGT has a known condition that can generate a low torque message when the running torque approaches the torque set point. If PGT has low torque message during operation, do not cycle the PGT collar to clear the message. Report turns and torque to me for uh, further action. Okay, sounds good. Okay, ready for PGT settings. I'm ready. You are going to drive the primary bolt. It's Bravo 1, clockwise 2. This primary bolt will turn about 23 times only. Do not go more than 23, and you will report the turns and the max running torque. Copy that. 23 turns. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Good read back. So a quick recap, kind of hard to see from the helmet camera of Ricky Arnold. Again, he's eight, number 18 in the bottom right of your screen. In his hands is the uh, replacement camera. They have successfully swapped positions. Uh, Ricky handed off the old camera to Drew uh, Foistel, who now has it in the orbital replacement bag and is taking it back to the airlock before he moves on to his next work site, which he's already gotten a head start on. In the meantime, Ricky Arnold driving the primary bolt that holds uh, that camera assembly in place.
guys. Are you there, Ricky? I'm counting. <laughs> Okay. okay, I got a low torque. I thought I was at twenty three. Torque is so in 12 decibel zero, I got a low torque with the red fault and the red torque light and power. It was right around what is the running seconds. torque there, Ricky? It's in the lower right-hand corner. Hey, would you... Two decimal four. Two decimal four, stand by. You're willing to put a, put a ret on this so that, put a what on it? A ret, so you're attached to this bag so I can unattach it from the handrail. No, so. hold on a second. Well, let me go ahead and do it now. Put this thing, they're going to be, they're going to be BRT right now. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. All right, we got one minute to sunrise. Here's a red. Let me know when it's attached. It's attached. Okay, I'm going to release this one. Okay. And you've got the bag, and I'm leaving. I got the bag. You pay a look. I'm out of here. I got light on my bag again. All right, guys, real nice job getting configured for our follow-on tasks. See your bag on your BRT there, Ricky. And we are ready to continue with the primary boat. Can I go ahead and release my ret from this? Uh, Why well, we go ahead and finish this, uh, install this bolt here, Ricky? All right, it's got it wrapped in my, the bag drew hand to me, so uh, it's going to be pulled toward the camera. All right, let's go do the primary bolt. I'm ready. Okay, the PGT setting uh, to finish this primary bolt will be alpha 3, clockwise 2, and you're going to see about 1.5 additional turns for a maximum turns of 24 and a half, and we'll take the final torque turns in light. Okay, alpha 3, clockwise 2. Good read back. Thinking two and a half turns. Uh, one and a half, 1.5. Okay, but do a hard stop or it stop at one and a half? It's going to torque out. Okay, copy. Covers open. Push. That's driving well past the turn and a half. I took it like four that's turns. That's okay. Did not torque out. All right, just just torque? keep going. Yeah, drive it to torque. Okay, copy that.
Here we go. All right. So it's four, 4.7, and the turns are 4.3. So the axle was 4.7, the turns were 4.3. Green okay. light. Copy that. That's good numbers. We'll go ahead and uh, you can release your mini workstation rep from the TVCIC and unlock it. Copy that. I'm going to clean it. Clean up here a little bit. And with both those turns uh, from Ricky Arnold uh, in his hands is the pistol grip tool driving the bolts for the, or at least the primary bolt for the camera assembly uh, that has just been replaced. Drew uh, Foistel handing off the new orbital replacement unit, the replacement to that camera, uh, and now that uh, camera has the primary bolt um, successfully driven. You want to stand by until we give you a go, and we'll, uh, we've got a couple of inhibits we need to do ahead of time. Still working with the camera to get it in the airlock, but stand by. Oh, yeah, we knew that. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay. Ricky Arnold has a few more bolts he has to work one that's uh, above and another one below uh, the current primary bolt. In the meantime, uh, Drew Foistel with the uh, old camera in tow heading over to the airlock, going to put that away and then head over to his uh, other work site where he's going to be working with a communications box, a space to ground uh, receiver and transmitter. Okay, but I still got to clean up that bag when we're done, but uh, at least the rips are in a good config now. I'm ready That's for Ricky, the next thank you. Step. Okay. Okay, you can do the Zenith or Nader bolt, either one, and uh, we're ready for PGT settings. I'm ready. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. You'll drive a Zenith bolt, or either bolt, the first one, five turns only. Return the, for the turns and then tur running torque. A Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Five turns only. So again, we're uh, getting a view from the helmet camera of Ricky Arnold. He's got two b more bolts. The primary bolt is in the center there, and he was just testing out the top and bottom. Those two bolts, he needs to drive the same number of turns. One, clockwise two, and we'll drive that same bolt, a minimum of an additional two turns, and we'll get the torque, turns, and light. Alpha one, clockwise two. Until it stops, and I'll give you all the data. But a minimum of one, right? Yeah, all that sounds good.
Okay, I got a green light on 5.0 turns and the running torque was 2.3. Final torque was 2.3. Okay, all that. That's a good install on that bolt. So we'll hit the, the next bolt, the last bolt. It'll be Bravo 1 again, clockwise 2. We're going to turn that bolt five turns again only and report the turns and the torque. Okay, Bravo 1, clockwise 2, five turns only. All right, on the Zenith bolt. Which safer handles are down? Gloves, look, dude. Okay, dry. Five turns, 0, 0.0 running torque. Five and 0, 0.0. And Drew, we copy the safer handles in the gloves. Make sure you get the thermal cover. And once you're ready, I think you're ready to go back to the uh, work site. Okay, thermal cover's closed. I'm heading back up. Nice work. Okay, Alpha 1 now for you, Ricky, clockwise 2. We'll um, drive to torque and report the torque turns and light. Okay. Point four turns, torque two point three, green light. Okay. That all sounds good. It's a good install. You can stow your PGT. Once you get that done, Ricky, we want to verify those NZGL connector bales are over center. Which bales on the aft on the back of the light? That's a firm. You might be able to get a better view once we you back away and we get an inventory and check out there, Ricky. Yeah, are these the bales? I mean, this is the the bales we we you know, this, never mind. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not going to be able to see it from here. Okay. We copy that. To verify the SD camera lens hood is square to the camera. It is. Okay, we think if you're ready and everything is clear and you've got your work site tidy, that you can go ahead and give uh, the guys, uh, arm guys, a maneuver or a go to maneuver to the hover position. I have one question for you. I'm sitting here looking at the lens of this camera, and it looks like there's a fleck of uh, something on it. Um, not very big, but it will be visible on the screen. I'm wondering if you want me to try to flick it off with my glove. Stand by just a second. Probably like a millimeter. Probably like a millimeter by a millimeter. Okay, Drew, we're picking up uh, when you're ready. We have our hibbets good and install are in place, so we're ready when you're ready. And you'll, I think the next day, we think you were up to where you were installing the round scoop from the ORU bag, installed on the failed SDTRC, and the handle will go orthogonal to uh, the box pointing nader. Okay, which that work is complete. I'm doing a uh, swap right now on the... Uh for the uh, straight 9-inch 
Okay, understand oh, you're sir. swapping to the nine inch. Okay, uh, Ricky, uh, no problem with you trying to see if you can remove that speck. Minimal touch, of course, to, if you can do it. Yeah. And it's free. Very good. Okay, we're ready for you to have the guy, give the guys when you're ready and all your tools and tethers are clear to back off to the hover position. Okay, hey, Butch, yeah, it's all looking good and uh, I'm, uh, I'm ready to back off. I'm clear. I can start an inventory with what I can see on the outside or we can just do it all at once. Yeah, I think we want to go to the back off position first, uh, Ricky. And when we when you are clear, you'll give us a go for the light checkout. Once we do that, then we'll get the inventory. Okay, perfect. I'm ready. Uh, Scott and uh, Emo, I'm uh, ready to go to the hover position when you guys are. Okay, brakes are already off, and we are ready to maneuver station Zenith about three meters. And this is no Z. You're ready for settings. I'm done. You know what? The, the bail looks good too on that connector. Which... So a quick recap while we are in uh, transition of video communications from the uh, station. Dr Ricky Arnold has driven the bolts for the camera. He's going to back away um, on the station's robotic arm. Again, Scott Tingle and North Shigek and I inside at those controls. Back away and do a quick inspection before he moves on to his uh, work site working alongside Drew Foistel, who's currently over at the communications box beginning those procedures. on the scoop with slack. PGT settings. It'll be Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2, and you'll be releasing the two secondary bolts about 15 turns, and the bolts will spring out and free spin once they're released. It'll be Bravo 1, counter 2. All right, but it looks like I'm at the hover position. This is a term, Ricky, and uh, you are go for inventory. And uh, meanwhile, we are setting up the next maneuver, J. Ocas. Again, the turns for the uh, bolts. All right, boys, I see a shower cap on a ret. I'm going to put in a bag. I see another ret with a scoop that needs to go on the bag, and I think that's all that's in the bag. Um, so I'm going to bundle that up, and then I can read what's, I tell you what's on the outside. That sounds good so far, Ricky. Okay, Butch, the uh, forward outer bolt is released. Going for the out. Super. They both and their bolts are released. Okay, understand both bolts are released there, Drew. We copy that. Your PGT settings are the same, Bravo 1, counterclockwise 2. You're going to release the primary bolt. It'll be about 31 t turns, and that bolt as well will free spin. Copy. Okay, 
scoop on the rats in the bag. So that's what is in the bag. And then on the outside, there are a an adjustable, a small, small ret, and then it looks like a large, small adjustable ret. And Houston, Butch, no joy with that torque setting on the primary bolt. Working out. Okay, stand by. Are you happy with that inventory? Actually, we're checking. The only thing is it's got one extra rat. We think it might have come from Drew, but uh, that's the only issue. Okay. Well, better one more than too few. Good point. Concur. <laughs> we found one. Hey, Ricky, we are ready to maneuver JOCAS if you are okay. I was wondering about the check out of the camera. Hey, Drew, just want to make sure both those secondary bolts are popped out. They are both popped out. Okay, we're going to try the Bravo 1 count or uh, counterclockwise 2 setting one more time, Drew. Yeah, I, just so you know, I've pulled the trigger about 15 times on it. That's all we get. Okay, there's our answer. So, stand by. Okay, here we go, Drew. We're going to go into ratchet mode on the PGT, and you can set that multi-limiting torque setting to 10 and try to break the torque with the ratchet mode of the PGT, and once you do that, we will then give you another PGT setting. Okay, uh, clutch is set to 10 decimal 5, and I'm in ratchet counterclockwise. We like it. And it looks like the bolt is turning pretty freely. Please. Which are we going to uh, run a check out of the camera? We are ready to do that now. Here we go. All right. Uh, you can go back into regular mode on the PGT. And then we'll set Bravo 1 counterclockwise 2 again, Drew. Okay. I'm resetting to uh, 30.5. The clutch. That's correct. And then you'll uh, go approximately 31 turns until the boat free spins. This one will not pop out. Okay, Bravo 1, clockwise 2, two turns, 31. That's firm. Okay, that's in work. So you're getting a view of uh, Drew Foistel again. He's EV1 for this particular spacewalk, wearing the suit with the red stripes. Currently in his hands is the pistol grip tool. He's using to uh, unbolt the um, space-to-ground communication uh, box that he's currently working with at this current location, uh, unscrew it, and begin the uh, remove and replace process. In the meantime, Ricky Arnold's still at the end of the station's robotic arm. He's uh, checking his bag, putting away all of his components, and uh, getting ready to uh, get out of the foot restraint and remove it from the station's arm so he can put it away and go over to help Drew Foistel.
He's got a spare moment right now, so he's got the camera in his hand, um, taking a few photos, and as well as inspecting his glove for any damage. The suit is a vital component to the um, uh, success of a spacewalk, and it has been a technology that has been uh, that is since the 70s and has been upgraded uh, quite a bit to uh, be maintained aboard the International Space Station. Sitting with me now is uh, Brian Macias, who is an EMU hardware manager for the life support systems on that suit. Brian, thank you for joining me. So they're doing hub, or hap and glove checks quite a bit uh, throughout this whole EVA. Is there, what is the purpose of doing that? Three, one back to the bag. Okay, Drew, we want to get an inspection of... Uh, okay, there we go. Little technical difficulties. Well, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, glove and hap checks, uh, something, well, first for the gloves, uh, that's something that they've been doing uh, since they've been using the suits. Obviously, the gloves, every EVA they do, uh, they got to use their hands quite extensively. And uh, there's just a little bit of material between the inside of their suit and the outside the vacuum of space. And we like to, you know, the gloves are pretty durable, but uh, we need to make sure that they, they stay in good condition. So uh, we don't know where sharp edges may be or hazards that are on the on the space station. So periodically we got to have the crew inspect their gloves, make sure there's no no damage so that they continue their EVA. Now the HAP is something more recent. Uh, that uh, stands for Helmet Absorption Pad. Uh, that was first commissioned, I believe, in about 2014. Uh, and that was one of the responses to the uh, 2013 uh, EVA number 23 water and helmet incident when one of the crew members got an excessive amount of water in their helmet and he almost drowned. Uh, this HAP is designed to absorb quite a bit of water, uh, probably about 1.5 liters worth of water. Um, the suit holds about a gallon, a little over a gallon of water, so this HAP can absorb a good bit over half of that water. Um, and so the crew is actually able to detect if there is moisture stored in that in that HAP. They can just kind of lean their head back in the, in the helmet. And if it feels squishy, then we know we've got a problem. Uh, if, it, if they don't feel anything, then we're good to go and we continue. A great piece of technology to ensure the success of the mission and particularly the safety of the crew as well. So for, again, we're getting a view of uh, uh, Drew Foistel right now. Again, the suit in the commentary for any suit questions. We'll be asking, uh, answering questions live here uh, during today's broadcast. Use the hashtag AskNA Ask NASA to ask questions, uh, particularly since we have uh, Brian Macias here. Anything about uh, the suit or life support systems? Listen, EB2, we are ready for JOKF, if you are. Yeah, we're ready for the we're ready for the egress the the maneuver to the egress position. Okay, sounds good, guys. I'm ready when you are. Hey, Ricky, we're gonna start off from the vernier first. Thank you. So started. So here's a view from uh, Drew uh, Ricky Arnold's helmet camera again taking some photos. Uh, he was he's currently still on the uh, station's robotic arm at the end of a portable foot restraint that allowed him to install uh, that new replacement camera. Uh, the station's robotic arm currently be controlled by Scott Tingle, assisted by Norishige Kanai. They backed uh, Arnold away so they can do an inspection of the camera. The camera checked out uh, very nicely. All the systems are go. Again, this camera was a replacement uh, for the camera port 13 spot uh, currently has a standard definition camera attached to it not a high definition camera uh, the crew was troubleshooting some ways to install that high definition camera but didn't quite fit uh, but this camera is still fully functional so they installed it on today's EVA the high definition camera will be installed at a later date once they troubleshoot the issue 
it's hard to get a good look just because of the sunlight and kind of shaded. All right. Well, Drew, if you don't mind snapping a few shots of that guy, and we'll bring him inside and look at him. And speaking of high-definition cameras, the view that we previously saw was a view from the uh, crew member's helmet cam. And uh, I imagine you could tell there's the view again. Um, it's pretty low definition. It's definitely not high def. Th those cameras are quite old. But uh, within the next year, we should be launching new high-definition television cameras for the suits themselves. So the same stunning views that you see broadcast from ISS will soon be broadcasting from our spacesuits. Great. And I mean, from a public affairs perspective, selfishly, I would absolutely love a view, a high-definition view from the perspective of the astronauts, but I'm sure it has some great engineering uses, too. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of amazing that we, haven't, we don't have that technology up there yet, but, you know, these things take time. You can see now the station's robotic arm in motion attached to the robotic arm. Ricky Arnold, uh, spacewalking astronaut EV2 for this particular spacewalk. He's wearing the suit with no stripes. While you're there, Drew, you can go ahead and check the, there's no FOD or bit pins and good EMI band on that side on the SDGRC there. Yeah, the uh, kind of side looks good. Just look good. Okay. It's all right. Everything else. Okay, we're ready to uh, install that uh, box by sliding it along the two guide pins into the install position. And recall there is no soft dock. Not the end, uh, secondary bolts are going to be driven first or primary? I guess primary. Yeah, that'll be the primary bolt first. And your settings? Bravo 1, clockwise 2. So meanwhile, the uh, station's robotic arm moving uh, Ricky Arnold uh, to exit from the portable foot restraint. This is a view of Drew Foistel currently working on, uh, he has just successfully removed the failed uh, space to ground communicating box, now is in the process of installing the new one. I'm ready when you are. Copy. Set up, uh, set up manual mode. Sounds good. Hey, Butch, you got a second? Hey, affirmative. Yeah, I'm just going to drop. I'm going to drop the bag, go and uh, take the ATFR to the uh, to the uh, seat of cart, which is just inboard of me, correct? And stow it there in uh, width number. I can't remember the number. It's one. Width one. That's correct. Okay. Come back, get the ORU bag, and then head toward the DCSU. Okay, that's all a good plan. That's good. good call. Okay, thank you. Switch the all right. new unit is uh, installed. Okay. Uh, well, it's in place. I'm ready to so, drive. Yeah, Bravo One's clockwise two. You're going to go 23 turns only. Report the turns and the max running torque. Uh, will the max running torque stay on the display, or do I have to see it while it's going? Yeah, it'll stay on the display. Okay, I'm going to go to 23 turns. Here we go. Hey Houston, is that okay to use a COM for GCA? Oh, go ahead. Okay, GCA start. Ricky, we are starting uh, station... Z, uh, station Nader. Okay, copy that.
but the half meters. Security. Next maneuver is station up about the two meters, coming as close to the truss. Okay, I got eyes on it. Everything looks good. Ingress aid is tucked in. Copy. Motion starts. In motion. Houston, we're going to try that one more time. Did not have it seated well to get the bolts driven. We copy. Key, what made that to go? Okay, sounds good. To go. You're hearing Norishige Kanai, who's uh, assisting Scott Tingle at the controls of the station's robotic arm. Again, Ricky Arnold at the end of it, uh, currently being um, moved into position so he can exit from the portable foot restraint. In tow is an, uh, is an equipment bag where he uh, t has all of his tools that he used for installing the new camera, which checked out very nicely uh, on camera port 13. Meanwhile, uh, Drew Foistel over at his work site using the pistol grip tool to drive some bolts for the new communications box that's being uh, swapped out for a failed one. Looks like the torque, low torque message of 8.6 is what's still on actual. Stand by. Okay, the final setting will be Alpha 7, clockwise 2. You'll drive that bolt to torque and report the torque turns in light. Alpha 7, clockwise 2. Alpha 7, clockwise 2, drive to torque. Drew Foistel working through the procedures, getting the settings for his second run at using the pistol grip tool to drive this bolt. Um, in his hand is the pistol grip tool that he uses uh, his gloves to just pull the trigger, sort of like a drill here on Earth. I'm sitting here with Brian Macias, who's the EMU hardware manager for life support systems. We have a question from Ask NASA. This question is from Andrew. If there is a tear in the glove, or any part of the suit for that matter, What's the protocol? That's a good question, and that's the reason why we do the periodic glove and hap checks throughout the EVA. Um, it, it really depends. Um, the gloves are, consist of uh, multiple layers of fabric and rubber designed to, to try to prevent ripping or tearing if, if the suit were to encounter a, a sharp edge or a, a some sort of hazard. Um, depending on how big the, uh, if, if, the, if there were a tear in the glove, um, we would call a terminate EVA and have the crew come stop what they're doing and come back into the airlock. If there were an actual breach of the pressure uh, integrity of the suit, uh, the suit is equipped with a, uh, it's called a secondary oxygen pack or SOP. That's their emergency air supply. Uh, provides them with about 30 minutes worth of additional oxygen uh, and that can tolerate a leak about uh, about a qu uh, an eighth of an inch hole equivalent in the suit. Um, 
as long as the hole was not larger than that, they've, they've got 30 minutes worth of oxygen to get back to the airlock, get back on their umbilical, and then start the reset, re uh, repress process. Um, if the, uh, the the hole were any bigger than that, then unfortunately that would be a bad day. So again, that's why we do the periodic checks to make sure that there's no damage, that hopefully if, if there is damage, we see it uh, we see it right away and respond appropriately. See, they do all these checks uh, for a reason, right? And so we don't encounter issues like that, and we are, are keeping track of every step along the way. But it's nice to know that if something in the unlikely event that something were to occur, there is a procedure to make sure the crew can get back safely. And uh, after every EVA, we have the crew take detailed photographs of, of their gloves and send them back down. I engineers on the ground, we look at them to make sure that the gloves' the integrity is still good so that they can be u reused. And of course, if they're not, they have backup gl gloves uh, and all, uh, on board, and then we can also launch new gloves. Uh, so very important to keep those in good shape. That's right. And Ricky Arnold, again, in the in the suit with no stri stripes, uh, successfully exiting from the portable foot restraint using his gloves to take him uh, safely out of that restraint. Uh, of course, he is still tethered uh, to the uh, space station for safety reasons. He'll get himself situated, uh, untether from the station's robotic arm, and uh, take off the portable foot restraint to stow at another location. Uh, right before he goes over to help uh, Drew Foistel with his current task of installing a new communications box. So, so what do you want? Alpha, Go Now we're going three. Bravo 1, clockwise 2, five turns only, report the turns in the torque. Uh. Okay, okay guys, if I could get the arm just a little bit closer to me for the safety tether swap and the UPFR removed, that would be great. Okay, five turns. So the turns are five. Work is zero. Come on, Scott, you copy? Okay, we copy that. We'll take Alpha One again, clockwise two. You'll drive it to torque, report the torque, turns and light. Copy. Hey, Butch, I'm going to need a G quick GCA here just to get the APFR a little closer for the removal, and then I'll do my safety tether swap, grab the APFR. Okay, ready to go when you are. Okay, guys, you ready? We are ready, and uh, start the GCA. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to need some station, uh, station uh, Nader. In light 2.3, four additional turns. Probably about a meter. Okay, starting uh, Station Nader. Good motion. Another short handover of video communications uh, in the back there in the foreground is uh, the lead spacewalk officer of today. That's Jordan Lindsay. He's leading the teams, talking with um, uh, other EVA officers in the back rooms, making sure uh, every procedure is detailed and he knows the procedures in and out is reporting to Flight Director uh, Anthony Varia, uh, who's leading the teams here in the International Space Station Mission Control Room today. Break, break, three, break, two, one. Stop motion. Okay, Butch, sorry. Okay, I'm going to need some uh, station. Uh, you guys want to get a quick call in before I make this next call? Yeah, my bad. We had a quick uh, turnover there, and I thought we were done. My apologies. So, uh, no, go ahead. I just need station aft maybe like uh, 20 centimeters. The station aft of 20 centimeters. Good motion, guys. Continue. 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 You're all clear. USA is folded back. Continue. 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 Three, two, one. Let's stop motion there. Copy, stop motion. You can put the brakes on. GCA complete. Brakes on and the GCA complete. Okay, Butch, I'm ready for the safety tether swap. Okay. Lock your green tether reel. Lock my green tether reel. Yeah, 
So that is uh, Ricky Arnold currently aboard the uh, International Space Station in his EV-2 suit, the suit with no stripes. Hard to see now. We don't have uh, video communications quite yet, but he's working with Norshige Kanai and Scott Tingle on the inside of the station. Tingle at the controls of the robotic arm, Kanai uh, reporting the uh, status of the robotic arm as it moves. Uh, Ricky Arnold trying to move the st uh, station's arm into position so he can get his uh, safety tethers off of the station's robotic arm uh, and get them configured for, so he can uh, begin his next task. Or your uh, socket swap again and start cleaning up the worksite. Got to go for checkout. I'm clear of the worksite and I'm working on my tether swap. Ricky, I want to make sure you weren't waiting on me. Uh, I'm waiting for your call that your gate is closed and hooked up. You are not waiting on me, my friend. <laughs> okay. to move your yellow hook to the green tether reel and check the gate closed and hook lock. Super, gate closed, hook lock, we copy that, and then you can unlock your green tether reel, and that should complete it. I'll give you the call, everybody, yeah, stand by one. Green tether reel is unlocked. Yellow hook locked, closed and locked on the green tether reel. Red tether reel remains unlocked. Totally eating green is to the red, and red is to my evening extender, and that is closed and locked. We like uh, your config there, uh, Ricky. Nice work. And if you can, if you haven't done it already, stow the APFR ingress aid against the boot plate, and then you can maneuver the arm to the removal position. I think I can probably remove it from here. So as we uh, transition, uh, communication satellites here uh, until we regain video communications. Uh, you're looking at the inside of the International Space Station flight control room. We still have audio communications with the crew. Um, Drew Foistel is uh, wrapping up his procedures of installing that new communications box. They're doing a checkout to see if the if the box itself is working. In the meantime, Ricky Arnold uh, configuring his tethers uh, so he can get successfully unattached to the station's robotic arm. Uh, then he'll uh, take off the uh, portable foot restraint and put it in its new location uh, before he goes back to the airlock with the uh, 
uh, orbital replacement bag for all of his tools and equipment uh, of replacing that camera so that he can go ahead and uh, get ready for his uh, next set of tasks. Drew, if you don't mind, when you get to that point, we'll take a, make sure you got a good pull test on both the nine and the six inches after the swap. That was complete. I got a good pull test on both. All right, super. Okay, before you go, uh, we're going to need to retrieve that round scoop. If you hadn't done it, I'm just following up on my checklist here. Uh, from the installed SDTRC and stow it on that uh, ORU bag's microconical. That's complete. It has a tether on it. All right, super. Got the ball stack attached to the bag, locked on the bag with the tether as well. Outstanding. You're doing a great job. So uh, when you're ready, we'll take the inventory. Stand by. While you're working through all that, Drew, just curious if you saw any uh, flakes, Z93 flakes come off that old box. Uh, no, I did not see any flakes coming off that box. Thank you. An obvious. Okay, okay guys, the APFR is off the arm. If you want to go ahead and back away the arm, that would be great. And clear up my translation path out to the uh, APFR spill site. Okay, okay, we are ready to maneuver to the parking position. I'm ready for you too. It's a purely uh, station Zenith motion. Sounds good. All right, Ricky, that'll be going like we said earlier in WIF 1, which is a Nader port uh, position on the Cedar cart, and you're looking for 6 Papa Papa Fox 6. Papa Papa Fox 6, got it. Hey, Butch, if you're ready for an inventory, I'll give you something. We are all ears, go ahead. Okay, I got the SGC antenna in the bag with a scoop on it with a ret to the internal V ring of the bag. All right, super. Continue. Nice job today, really. Sorry, Drew, we got caught in a handover. The only thing I heard was that you had the uh, SCTRC on a RET to the in internal D-ring. Got a large, small on the bag, external. I've got a RET that goes into the bag. It's attached to an internal bearing that comes outside and is actually just attached to the um, uh, the handrail and probably just goes to the ball stack, but I just want to mine instead. So I've got a uh, adjustable rat that goes to the scoop external, which is on the bag. I think I already called out the ball stack attached to the handle. So there's one extra ret, and that's one of mine that attaches the ball stack to the scoop. In total, I have one, two, three, four rets, two scoops, ball stack in the bag, ready in the socket. Yeah, we believe that's everything, Drew. Uh, we had a couple little dropouts there. We just want to make sure you had a RET or, or an adjustable to the external scoop. Yes. 
few of them. All right, super. We like that story. So we are regaining. We have regained um, uh, video communications with the space station. Uh, right now, you're getting a look at Ricky Arnold in a suit with no stripes. He's EV2 today. Um, successfully uh, detached himself from the station's robotic arm and is putting away that foot restraint that he's been in uh, for quite some time. You can see it's sort of towards his left leg. Uh, in the meantime, Drew Foistel is actually beginning the cleanup procedures for installing the new communications box. Uh, he's working once again with the ball stack. This is a temporary stowage platform where he was able to put the uh, spare and functional communications box as he removed uh, the old one. Now he's uh, cleaning up his site uh, over on the truss. We are using a uh, hashtag ask NASA questions. Uh, we just had a very long handover of video communications. The first one is from Levi who's asking what causes video communications uh, to fail. Uh, they actually don't fail. Uh, That's just a handover of uh, what are called the TDRS satellites, tracking data and relay satellites that provide the communication from space as the uh, space station is orbiting the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour. Uh, it sends communication up to the satellites that are just over 22,000 miles away and then back down here to the ground. They are not exclusively used by the International Space Station. It's shared among other users, uh, So that, but during usually spacewalks, uh, we prioritize the time, so we maximize the amount of uh, connective uh, capability as we hand over from satellite to satellite. There's three that surround the Earth, uh, so as the uh, International Space Station travels quickly around the Earth, we can uh, maintain as, many, as much video communication as possible. Again, I'm here with uh, Brian Macias, who's an EMU hardware manager for the life support systems. Uh, Melissa Davis is asking, uh, using the hashtag AskNASA, are the suits custom built for each astronaut? Brian. Well, the answer is sort of. Um, there are three main sizes of the upper portion of the suit, which is called the hard upper torso, or HUT. Uh, there's a a medium, large, and extra large, and those are just sized for your, the circumference of, of your chest. Um, the other components, uh, the, the legs and the arms, have a set size, but we can actually install sizing rings to make the make them uh, longer or shorter as we need. We can also pull in some restraints to elongate or take up some of that slack. The only part of the suit that's sort of custom built are the gloves. Um, not every crew member gets their own custom pair of gloves. Uh, if we can match a crew member's hand to a former crew member in the past and we still have a pair of those gloves or a mold of that glove, uh, we would make that. Uh, every now and then we do have to make custom gloves for folks, but we've probably got about 65 or so uh, different sizes of gloves out there to accommodate. It makes sense because, uh, as you can see, uh, this is the helmet camera from Ricky Arnold. Uh, the gloves are the primary thing that are used during a spacewalk. There's not a lot of uh, walking with your feet when it comes to spacewalking. Everything is done with the hands, moving and uh, and working with tools, moving components. Everything is done with the hands, so it makes sense to have gloves that would be uh, perfectly fitted for each astronaut to ma make sure that uh, they can perform the spacewalk as efficiently and effectively as possible. And, and as good as we can make the gloves and size them properly, it's still uh, it's still not perfect. Um, of course, they are working against a pressure differential. Inside their suit is pressurized to 4.3 pounds per square inch um, above ambient. So in the vacuum of space, they're at 4.3 psi, which is equivalent to about a third of atmospheric pressure at sea level. Or another way to think of it, uh, if you're on top of Mount Everest, the pressure on top of Mount Everest is the pressure that's inside these suits. Of course, they're breathing 100% oxygen, so that makes it okay. Um, but to overcome that pressure differential is uh, is quite a quite a feat. Um, you know, it's it's not like just putting on a pair of gardening gloves. So um, right, guys, you can get sure pretty fatigued uh, throughout the course of a six or seven hour EVA, as you can imagine, trying to make a fist against a pressure differential. Um, so that's why we try to 
uh, design tools with as little movement of the hands as possible. Super, yeah. Um, I'll get I'll get that for you here in just a second. I'm just going to tell you we're looking at uh, a couple of get-aheads. Drew, looking at you doing the RGB T-handle install. So you'll be getting the get-aheads crew lock bag when you get back to the airlock. And for you, Ricky, I think we already told you, you're going to head over to do the DCSU MLI removal on ELC-2. Okay, we're looking at about 4.41 uh, PET right now, and you've got about two hours consumables left, and uh, all is looking well, good met rates. Fantastic, thanks. Got the kind of bundled in there. Uh, I was trying to escape. Ricky, I wonder if it might be easier if you put That's that uh, camera inside that bag. Uh, opening the bag would not be easier right now. That's what I'm trying to avoid at all costs. I concur. It's a little too bulky and uh, got a one hand in it right now. So uh, I think it's good enough. Double tether, it's not going to go anywhere. Yep, looks good. Thank you. I appreciate the suggestion. Okay, I have the bag on my DRT rat. Releasing the other adjustable. Just over four hours and 44 minutes into today's planned six and a half hour spacewalk, uh, our two spacewalkers, Drew Foistel and Ricky Arnold, are wrapping up uh, their primary tasks. Um, Drew Foistel has just installed a new communications box, space to ground communications box. Uh, the ground teams did a test of that box and it checks out perfectly. Uh, it's working just fine. In the meantime, Ricky Arnold has his bag that he's putting away. Uh, that includes the camera. Um, there is plenty of time left in the timeline. Uh, C Mission Control is looking at uh, doing some of the get-ahead tasks, uh, some extra tasks now that they have a little bit of extra time. And Ricky, we're ready for you to head starboard. You'll be placing your green hook on S3 handrail 3011, and of course you want to check your gauntlets are in place. Hey, copy that. Push thermal covers open. About a minute ago. Okay, Second. super. Thank you, sir. Ricky, for you also, oh. as you translate, you'll want to stay at least nine inches away from the C2, V2 antennas on S3. Okay, copy that. 